let's say that white privilege did exist and that mm -hmm. too many people by and large are weaponizing white privilege to get ahead in society and that it was mm -hmm. um, immoral and that we both agreed with that, then mm -hmm. um, what sort of things do you think that white people would have to do to dispense with their privileges? It, obviously the first question is, is it possible, right? And if so, yeah. how, how would they go about doing it? Yeah, I think that's an interesting question because I think um, if you have a privilege or you have a competitive advantage that um, allows you to uh, move higher socioeconomically relative to, to other ethnic groups, you're not going to give that up very easily, are you? Um, and in fact, I think we would be a little remiss of human nature or, or, or way too idealistic of human nature if we think that someone with an advantage would just willingly give that up um, on the basis of some kind of moral grounds, um, especially given that all a majority of white people would have to do it as a group and simultaneously for it to work. You know, if, if just one person gave it up then you're just basically putting yourself at a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, so I think personally, you know, I think, you know, I know we're, we're talking about 21st century, but I think, you know, with the, the movement with Martin Luther King and things like that, that's what, that's what was required. You know, I think if African-Americans were silent, I, I think eventually maybe, maybe eventually it, it could have, been toppled it, it had taken a lot longer but i think um the people who were disadvantaged systemically and um through the legislation of the land um by doing peaceful protests and saying hey this isn't fair you know we want opportunities just as you have you know as white people have um i think that made it constantly prevalent and it it, it kind of uh, it, 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 that was the catalyst that had changed America's legislation and, and Jim Crow laws and things like that. I think without that, it would have happened much slow, much more slowly and, and much more gradually. And it wouldn't have happened, um, as it should have. I mean, look at South Africa as well. You know, it took massive social movements. It took Nelson Mandela peacefully, um, protesting and, and constantly showing the majority that this isn't fair you know um and that's human nature as well i think genuinely we have a um inclination for we, we have a very acute sense when things are unfair and um and if you can play on that that kind of shows that hey we are all humans at the end of the day and there's there shouldn't be discrimination like this but i think you know, I think we'd be a little too idealistic to think that if a specific group has advantages that help them get ahead, that they would um, willingly put that down without any external catalysts as well. I just don't think it would happen. What, what do you mean, put it down without an external catalyst? So, so I think, for example, um, if white people did have a bunch of privileges, um, I don't think they would give that up on their own accord basically, because morally it's wrong. You know, things are only morally wrong for someone if, if you're on the, the, the limited side of it. You know, if you're benefiting from it, that's really hard to give up, right? Mm -hmm. um, think of like a company or something. If they have some regulation that really, this, this happens, this happens, you know, there's regulation that only big companies are allowed, to, are, are, are able to deal with economically, and that puts small companies and startups at a disadvantage yeah. these large comp these large companies aren't going to be lobbying for the legislation to be a lot lighter for some of these smaller companies in fact they're doing the exact opposite they're trying to exacerbate their privilege to maintain their position and grow it relative to the competition um and i think that would happen on a on a human individual level as well yeah i, I also think it's really really tricky to kind of perceive um your own privilege right i think it's so much easier to perceive the privilege that exactly. other people are exactly granted. and i think this is what the issue is 
I think that people are just looking up, right? They're, they're obviously gauging their own milestone and then looking around them to see who's competing with them. And then kind of, rather than taking responsibility, it's, it's almost like they're passing the responsibility onto somebody else on the competitor, the, the, the competitor as well, right? So they're expecting them to give up their advantage for them to have a better chance at acquiring whatever aspiration it is that they have, right? So it's something that I've noticed as well. Um, even, even, I don't know how aware you are of this, but it's even prevalent in, I think, um, the African-American community in Western countries, especially the USA. I think now that mm. a few generations have gone by since um, the civil rights movement, we're starting to see mm -hmm. a lot more black people acquire success. And people expect mm -hmm. them to kind of give up their wealth or follow some kind of political agenda, right? Which mm -hmm. tends to lean on the left. And mm -hmm. a lot of the black people who have acquired their success seem to have different value structures than a lot of other African-Americans who haven't acquired that yet. And mm -hmm. people tend to antagonize those kinds of people who don't agree with the political agenda that they're putting forward. And it's just yeah. so much more obvious um, in this generation, uh, I think, um, that it is jealousy, right? That there can be, it's like, yeah. unless you can get to the same level or the same social economic status, then of course it's easy for you to kind of vilify that individual, right? Um, mm -hmm. But I think a lot of people are remiss in their duty to actually try and internalize whatever precepts they've used to get to where they are. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and this is where I think, you know, obviously the civil rights movement was insanely justified. There was the law, the legislation in the land actually did discriminate and afford privileges yeah. on a systemic mm. level. Mm. So I think that I think that was a, a very justified movement. Um, but where something like this, I think, can get really dangerous and just a whole expression of white privilege and things like that can get really dangerous as it starts to demotivate and disincentivize um, minority groups because they think uh, the game's rigged towards mm. white people or the games, and then they don't even start to put themselves forward because why would you participate in a game that's rigged against you? Um, that mentality can be very toxic and, and exacerbate the discrepancies we see in today's society because unfortunately, there is no equal idealistic kumbaya society where everyone's the same economic status that's not how it works unfortunately that's not how nature works um there's going to be people who do society is going to value some things over others and some people are going to be a lot better at providing that value than others and they're going to get rewarded accordingly and that, you know that's just how it works you know and yeah. the more people use priv privilege as a, a a crutch or um a reason to not even play the game are only going to be um, basically confirming it, it, they're, they're going to be, it's going to be a positive feedback loop where they're going to materialize um, their own thoughts and things on, on the situation. And that's why I think the conversation around value structure should be way more prevalent. You know, there's certain um, values that capital society it, it values more, which is, you know, discipline, hard work, like gratification, education, um, these type of things. If you don't value those, um, you're not able to provide society itself with much value. And, and in return, you're not going to get rewarded accordingly. And your socioeconomic situation is going to stay stagnant or decline. And um, yeah, so I think, I think it's, it, it's, 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 this is where things have gotten a bit trickier in the 21st century because um, I think we do genuinely live in a, a place where the best rise to the top and, 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 and those that don't want to try or, or that don't right, fall to the bottom. And I think that's how it should be. You know, I think it should be a level playing field. All opportunities should be afforded to 
all players of the game and you know some people are going to be better than others and and but but that's not based on their skin color or based on their ethnic heritage that's based on their habits that's based on their mindset that's based on their value structure you know if you if you value taking a bunch of drugs all the time and um you know something like that then you get your outcome you know that that that's completely on you that's not the government's fault that's not society's fault you live in a free society where you have the the freedom to to move up or down the ladder as you choose um and you know it's not easy it's not easy moving up the ladder either you know so don't don't mistake privilege for hard work and discipline and you know yeah education and an investment in yourself essentially yeah i think what we have to remind ourselves of as well in pertinence to um let's say black america or just black people in the west in general is that it it it's not that long ago right since um, yeah. black people mm -hmm. were granted the same privileges as white people mm -hmm. and to expect um black people to be competing at the same mm -hmm. level of industriousness as white people in mm -hmm a culture that they have derived from for what thousands of years mm -hmm. it's, it's yeah it's it's pretty it's it's impossible right um we're talking one or two generations right it's it's no, not, I agree. it's yeah. not been long at all so if anything yeah, I agree. um it's us who should kind of take the reins and, and take responsibility and embody the kind of version of ourselves that, that we want to be or versions of the people in society in in our given ethnic group um yeah to kind of take control of that and and spearhead yeah the way, i right? agree yeah i agree i mean it, it's it's about having a paradigm shift it's about giving the rubric of success that maybe certain cultures have utilized for a long time and sharing that and making that prolific in our education and popular culture um otherwise you know but, but the, the same discrepancy. I, I do sympathize yep. with, with people who don't yet understand that, right? I think it can be quite contagious, of this mindset, right? It can be something rather pernicious, right? The idea of kind of um, putting blame on somebody else or excusing yourself for not having overcome some something because of somebody else, right? I think it's so easy to fall victim to that. And I think that it, we do kind of have to try to understand that and think of more practical ways to, to um, promulgate the correct way to deal with these problems. Because me, for example, mm. um, I didn't become cognizant of this kind of mindset until um, I actually graduated from university, right? So all throughout um, education, I kind of concede to having this kind of victim mentality, and it's yeah. and I and I admit it's so much easier to to blame other people, especially when mm -hmm. you're in a society that's predominated by the same ethnic group that um, oppressed your your ancestors or the mm -hmm. majority of your ancestors. Mm -hmm. Right? It's so easy yeah. to fall to that. So that's me, and this is somebody who's grown up around white uh, European people. So imagine if you haven't had the privilege of growing up and understanding people of another yeah. ethnic background, especially the ones who are kind of stigmatized as, as the oppressors, right? Yeah, no, no I, I completely agree with that. I, I, at the end of the day, it, it is a lot easier. It, it's a huge out for yourself. You can take all that personal responsibility off yourself and you can kind of give yourself a pass, you know, for any, any shortcoming or any, um, you know, shortfall you've had in your life. Um, it, you could say oh, that wasn't me, you know, it was this or that or that, and that's not conducive to success, unfortunately, um, mm. regardless of your skin color or your circumstance. And I think, um, the 21st century, I think certain minority groups definitely, it's very easy to justify their situation um, externally and, and to give themselves that pass. Um, 
because of it, it wasn't like you said, it wasn't that long ago that, you know, in the Americas it was in the sixties, it was even later in South Africa, you know, and, and these, um, cultural norms take a long time to, to filter out a society, you know what I mean? And that's still prevalent, but I think that's, what's dangerous in the 21st century is we're constantly keeping that alive. Um, that, that mindset that gives you a pass at the end of the day to, to not do what you need to do to, to get ahead. And, um, I know that might seem insensitive, but it's reality at the end of the day, you know, and, and unfortunately we can't hide from truth based on the political correctness or political incorrectness that it might have, um, you know, we're only going to become less effective as a people and um, there's just going to create more turmoil among racial groups and things like that. I think, you know, as, like I said before, you know, as long as everyone has the same opportunities, um, you know, let, let, let the best, rise to the top and you know let's you know let's get let's get our value structure right and and let competition and, and human nature do the rest you know what i mean um but make it really well known what it takes to succeed you know and a lot of that comes down to personal responsibility um that's really where it comes down to you know investing in yourself and um ignoring the ex not ignoring the external obstacles but um seeing that seeing external obstacles is just that obstacles not um obstacles can be barriers overcome, right? yeah exactly exactly yeah, yeah. exactly